Hi there, color pencil enthusiasts. Today, it's all about how to get the wow factor in your art using values and go from this to this. Welcome, I'm Jeanette, and there's nothing more satisfying than seeing your art pop off the page. Using values is an easy way to do this, and with five simple steps, you'll be on your way to creating art that has depth and beautiful shadows. So let's dive right in. I'm drawing on Stonehenge paper with a very small range of colored pencils. I'll put the color and pressure number in the left hand upper corner and if you would like the image template sheet and color list, I'll have that available on my website. The link is going to be in the description box below. I'll start off by working on the raven on the left. This is our low tonal range drawing, the one with no wow factor. The goal is to take that low value range drawing and make it a wow drawing using five simple steps. One, a good reference image. Two, know your light source and the direction. Three, know what value scales are and how to find them in your reference. Four, block in shadows and value shapes. And five, squint and flip. So let's jump right in with step one, choosing that good reference image. So having a good reference image is crucial when working with values in your drawings. A good reference image provides you with clear information about the light and shadow areas, which are essential for creating a realistic depiction of your subject. So here's how you can choose and use a good reference image. The first thing you want to be looking at is really good, clear, high resolution. This is going to allow you to see the details of the subject and the values more clearly. You want to avoid using blurry or low resolution images as they can make it difficult to accurately depict the values in your drawings. We're going to talk about what happens if you only have a blurry image and how you can fix it and how to use a fun and effective blur technique to help you quickly see shadows a little bit later. So back to the drawing, I'm using a medium gray and I'm working the drawing all over with the color at a pressure of about a one. So it's very, very light. This image is a great demonstration of all the points that I've talked about so far. Low light and shadows, no depth, and the reference image, which is in the corner, depicts an image with few shadows and little contrast. Okay, so let's continue with the second point of choosing a good reference image or subject. You want to find or set up a subject that has good contrast between light and shadows. This is going to help you understand how light interacts with the subject and how to create the illusion of depth and form in the drawing. Contrast in a drawing refers to the difference in light and darkness between different areas. You can see it clearly if your subject, like this car, has a lot of dark areas as well as light bright areas. In contrast to this is a subject that does not have a big range of lights and darkness, as in the right side of the car. Although there are dark areas on the low contrast side, the high contrast side just works better and is more visually appealing. It's the same with our raven image. Clearly, the low and high contrast are evident. It helps create depth, form, and dimension within the artwork. And three, we want to look at composition and subject matter. You're going to pay attention to the composition and subject matter on your reference image. Choose a subject that interests you, of course, and has a variety of textures and shapes to challenge your drawing skills. Also, pay attention to the way other subjects sit beside each other. Is there light reflection going on? For example, for a still life drawing, you might choose a reference image that features a variety of objects arranged in an interesting composition. Look for objects with different textures, shapes, and reflective surfaces to challenge yourself and create a dynamic drawing. So a quick wrap up on your reference images. You want to choose a photo as your reference image that has clear details, strong contrast, and an interesting composition that inspires your drawing. By following these guidelines and choosing a good reference image, you'll have a solid foundation for creating a drawing with strong values and realistic lighting. I mentioned earlier that I would talk about what to do if your reference image was blurry or didn't have enough contrast. There are some easy tools to help you with this. One, if you're working off a live subject and if you have access to a phone or a tablet to take a photo, then look at your subject before you start drawing it and see if it has those elements that we've talked about in values, contrast, sharpness, and, and good textures. If you're working directly from a photo, you can do the same. So you can reset your light source if the image is low contrast, get that brighter light on, or put it beside a window like what I've done here. 
If your reference photo is blurry or low contrast, you can use any photo editing tool and change that easily. I do know that Android phones has Google Photos and you can do about the same thing. I'm going into my iPhone and using Apple Photos. This comes with the phone. To sharpen the image, just click on the edit button at the top and select adjust. Then scroll down to sharpness and adjust. Next, you want to select definition, which is just below sharpness and adjust it the same. Easy. You can do the same on a desktop, a laptop or a tablet with free and simple tools. There's also a contrast selection button and other tools. Have fun with them as you work your photo. And we have a much better image now, ready to draw. I love that. Okay, on to step two. Understand your light source and the direction. Understanding your light source and its direction is essential for creating realistic and compelling drawings with accurate values. We already did a little bit of talking about lighting in step one, but let's talk a little bit more about lighting. Light plays a crucial role in how we perceive objects highlighting certain areas and casting shadows that define their form. Here's how you can understand and utilize your light source effectively. Identify the light source. Determine where the light is coming from in your reference image. Like our reference image of the raven, what direction is that light coming from? This could be natural light from the sun or artificial light. It could be coming from high above. It could be coming from a very low angle. Understanding the source of light will help you predict where shadows will fall and where highlights will appear on your subject, and then you can apply it to the rest of your subject. On to two, analyze light and how it creates contrast and values. Observe how light falls on your subject. Note how it creates highlights, midtones, and shadows. Understanding the direction of light will help to make sure that your whole drawing is creating light and shadow in the same direction, which creates harmony. And number three, we're going to consider what the angle of the light is. The angle of light determines the length and direction of shadows. A light source directly above will create shorter shadows, while a light source at an angle is going to create those longer shadows. Consider how the angle of light affects the appearance of your subject and adjust your drawing accordingly. And keep this in mind so it's consistent throughout your drawing. And number four, know what light is. Knowing even the basics of light is great. Some easy terminology is the brights are highlights and the shadows from subjects are cast shadows. Some ideas and examples of how values work with natural light are things like atmospheric perspective or atmospheric lighting, where objects in the distance appear lighter and less detailed. Use lighter values and softer edges for distant objects to create the illusion of depth in your drawing. Also, the quality of natural light changes throughout the day, affecting the colors and values in your scene. Consider the time of day you want to depict your image and adjust your values to match the lighting conditions. So let's jump back in and take a look at our drawing. We're still using the medium gray and adding in some value changes, but again, it's not very dramatic and appears flat even now. So we're gonna jump into step three. Know your value scales and prepare one if you need to. Understanding value scales and how to use them is essential for creating drawings with realistic light and shadow. A value scale is a range of shades from light to dark, representing the different values in your drawing. Here's how you can create one and use a value scale effectively. By the way, I do have a great video that walks you through this, and I'll make sure that it's added at the end of this one. So you're going to start with creating your own value scale. It's really easy and a great way to practice with your pencils how to control light and darkness. Just make nine small rectangles with your pencil, whatever color you want. Fill in the boxes going from light to dark. Work to create a smooth transition. This is an example that I have here. By using a value scale, you can accurately depict the lightness or darkness of different areas in your drawing, creating a more realistic and three-dimensional appearance. I always tell my students to try hard to get at least five value ranges if you can. Like our low value Raven is not even coming close to that. So it gets a big zero right now for value ranges. Moving to number two, do some practice. To master the use of values, practice drawing different subjects using value scale. Start with simple objects such as spheres or cubes and gradually move on to more complex subjects such as portraits or landscapes. This is going to help you understand how values work in different contexts and really improve your drawing skills overall. 
And number four, use a value drawing tool. If you're having trouble matching values, consider using a value finder tool. This is a small card or device that you can find in a lot of art stores. They usually have little holes in them or little cutout areas that you can actually put beside your image. You can also use apps such as ValuePal or Value Study. This can help you identify areas that need adjustment and improve the accuracy of your values. We're now moving on to our high value drawing of the Raven. This is step four. Once you have your reference image and understand your light source, it's time to start blocking in the values of your drawing. This step is crucial as it establishes the foundation for the rest of your work. Here's how you can approach it. You're going to start with a light base. We've already sketched the reference image on our paper. I'm going to do a lay down of some gray levels, same as the first image. But as I do this, I'm making sure that I add some values. This is the blocking in phase. It helps determine where the light is coming from and where the darks lay on the image. We've already determined that the light is coming in from the high right and all our drawing will reflect that. I've also adjusted from the first image to a reference that has a lot of values going from dark to light. I want to talk about step five, squint and flip at this point, even though we're still working on step four. This is a fun thing to do with your work. Squinting and drawing upside down or backwards are two techniques artists use to simplify complex scenes and focus on capturing accurate values. These methods can help you see the basic shapes and values more clearly, leading to a more accurate representation of your subject. It's pretty cool, actually. Here's how you can use it in your work. So squinting, number one. Squinting reduces the amount of detail you see, making it easier to see the overall shapes and values in your subject. So you just have to squint your eyes and look at the scene. It becomes a little bit blurry. This blurriness reduces the amount of visual information your brain processes, helping you focus on large shapes and values. I have talked about this before in another video. The difference between squinting and a blurry image is that squinting is temporary. Once you refocus, your image is back to sharp and clear, unlike a blurry image, which is blurry all the time. You can then use squinting throughout your whole drawing process. It's fantastic, and I love that. Number two, flipped. Drawing or looking at a reference image flipped forces you to see your subject as a collection of abstract shapes rather than as recognizable objects. It really does work. This can help you accurately capture the values and proportions of your subject. How to draw flipped is super easy. You just have to turn your reference upside down or in an editing program, flip it horizontally and draw it in this orientation. This technique can feel kind of awkward at first, but it helps you see the subject with fresh eyes and reduces the influence of your brain preconceived notions about the subject. You don't see the subject, you just see abstract objects. Drawing flipped helps you focus on the shapes and values rather than getting caught up in all those details. This can result in a more accurate representation of your subject's proportions and values. It's great. So you can see that I'm starting to add some darker colors. These are mid-tones. I'm not quite there with the dark darks yet, even though they do look quite dark. I'm using a darker gray and some blacks to shade in the areas and gradually building up the values to match the reference image. Bye. 
The final stage is adding and enhancing the shadows. I'm working with lots of the blacks and using solvents and blending pencils to really enhance and bring up the values. We started with a good reference image with strong values and sharp image. And we clearly had a good reference with the light source and knowing the value ranges was an important part of the process to get this high value drawing done. As we conclude, we did cover a lot today, five steps to better values, and clearly by applying all of these steps in the drawing, we did change things from the first image to this one. Remember, practice makes perfect, so don't be afraid to experiment and try these techniques on your own. And as always, if you enjoy this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more art inspiration. I really appreciate all your support, comments, and thumbs up. Thanks for joining me today, and I can't wait to see you in our next video. Happy drawing!